Got my cup of tea, we can begin. Hello felters and welcome. Today we're going to talk about wire armature. I'm going to talk you through two different types, one with pipe cleaners, which is really simple, and then one with craft wire. Um, I do think it can get quite overcomplicated and people do worry about how to do a wire armature correctly. Quite frankly, you've just got to try it and do it. Today's going to be really simple. It's just going to be the wire and the wool and get on with it. No glue, no taping, no special twisting. You just do it. So let's get started. Why would you do it is the first question. So I've done a cow here. He's got no um, armature in his legs and he's starting to get a bit wobbly. You might be thinking, I want to go a bit bigger. Um, so here's a sheep here that I've done. He has got stronger legs. And then also when you get up to the size of a little horse, uh, you're going to want them to be really quite strong because no amount of needle felting is going to keep those legs really stiff. Unless you put some wire through, it's going to be very hard. And the nice thing is that you can move the legs and position them and pose them. Uh, just remember, if you do it with a horse like this, if he has, he has to have at least three legs on the ground, otherwise he'll fall over. So from that point of view, I've done a rearing unicorn, but I had to fix him, fix his tummy in the middle there and he's on a wood board so he's really nice um, but yeah he's got a wire frame all the way through so what's the first instance of a wire frame that we can do pipe cleaners they're really cheap uh, this probably cost me about four or five pounds and you can take out one pipe cleaner and you can do any shape that you want say you want to do a dog do the legs round like that, twist it back on itself, go up through the back, twist it down again, do another leg, then you're gonna to have to add some more pipe cleaner on. The only thing about pipe cleaners is that one single pipe cleaner on its own is not that strong and not that sturdy, but what you can do if you've got pipe cleaners around is you can twist them together and that will make it a whole lot stronger and you can do your frame. We're gonna do a whole frame in a minute with the actual wire. The other thing about pipe cleaners to bear in mind is that the ends are quite sharp so you're going to have to bend them back. You can bend them back with your fingers so they're very easy, you don't need any extra tools um, and the other thing is you can cut them with a normal pair of scissors. So that's the wire, uh, that's the pipe cleaners, sorry. Pipe cleaners are also nice and easy to wrap the wool around when you're attaching the wool it doesn't slip so much as it does with wire so pipe cleaners are a great starter. So what we're going to do, this is craft wire, this is one mil, I'm going to do um, a link down below, I've got an Amazon affiliate site but a lot of people ask me exactly what craft wire I use. So it's one millimetre thick, now this is really quite bendy, um, I bend it back on itself, I twist it round, I do a lot of things with this. 1.2 mil is fine as well and then 1.6 is really quite sturdy and you probably wouldn't need to bend it back on itself quite so much. So in one leg, when I'll go down and do the leg in a minute, I would go uh, down and back up. But with a 1.6 mil, you probably wouldn't need to. Along with wire, um, craft wire, you're going to need cutters that are professional cutters. Now these are not very expensive. Again, I'll do a link to these only because um, they're like they're jewellery tools and there's a little cutter just inside there. These are flat nose pliers, so they give you a really nice flat edge when you um, bend it back over. The reason why that is good, because when this is at the bottom of the leg, you don't want a sharp wire pointing out. Uh, I don't like that at all, because people could hurt themselves. So bending it back and making it really flat is really good. If you have the 1.6 wire, what you end up doing is you get a pair of round nose pliers. Again, these come in like little tiny kits all together. And I'll show you now before we go down to the mat. You just twist it back on itself and then that will be the bottom of the leg. And again, that wouldn't hurt if someone wants to um, pick up your uh, needle felting item and have a look at it all around it. So I think that's it. Let's get down to the mat. I've cut a piece of wire. Um, it's about probably about 40 inches long. Uh, you're just going to have to try it. It doesn't matter if you've got a little bit too extra. The uh, wire that I got off Amazon is about, I don't know, four or five pounds for 10 meters. So you take one end of the wire and this is where you're going to work out how long your leg is going to be. If you are unsure of how to 
measure something out. Uh, take this deer, I would just work it out and then put the middle of the frame through the middle of the body. So if you look at how long that is, and then that's how long your leg is going to be. I don't do a lot of measuring when I do this. So I'm gonna make this the bottom of my leg. So I've done a little fold back on itself and then I'm going to take it into an arch. My sheep keep getting bigger and bigger so I'm gonna try and do this one a little bit smaller. So there's an arch, this is really rough. You don't, it doesn't have to be really neat and perfect. And then I'm gonna get the flat nose pliers again and make the end nice and flat. Because this is so thin, this wire, it's really, movable so that's quite nice so I've done what I would say were the back legs so I take the wire up to the top midpoint I like to wrap it round once like that I used to spend ages taping it and it was really tricky so now I just wrap it round which is why I like this slightly thinner wire and then we're going to do the length of the back so I know my sheep's back length is about there and I give it a little bend and this is where we're going to do the arch of the next leg so this is it's just a bit tricky that's all it is but it doesn't have to be perfect so put it on the mat try and work out where it hits the bottom and then double back on itself I like to do that at the end a little making it nice and flat and then I twist it back round I like to just twist it round just so that it's not flapping about all over the place. And then we're gonna go back round and do the arch on the other side. And I think that's, that's a good length, yeah. And again, a little flat nose there. And then I've got a little bit of wire left here and I just twist it up. Now, if you had any wire left, you just wrap it down the back, twisting it round and it strengthens the back. So I'm just gonna adjust it, see how it feels, how it looks. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if one leg is way too long at the moment, then you could trim it down. You will always get legs that are too long, slightly too long or slightly too short. And don't panic about them until you're a bit further along. Some people like to leave long wires coming out the bottom of the legs and then they trim it afterwards. So there's the frame and if you have a look that is sort of how it is going to go on the inside of my sheep. So I get some wool, this is just a core wool or I just use a, a, a white, this is a sort of, I think it's a Leicester wool or a Shetland and it's carded. I do a whole uh, series on wools, needles, mats, all sorts of things. It's called the Needle Felting Essential Series. So if you're anyway worried or confused about needle felting and, and all of the tools and accessories you can get, have a look at my Essential Series, I'll link them below. So I've just taken that wool and I've wrapped it round really tightly. The tighter you can do it, the better. The other thing to note is if you use quite a thick needle, this is a 36 um, because there are chance, there are strong chance that you're going to hit the wire and if you hit the wire too many times with a really thin needle, guess what, it's going to break. So I will just secure this in for now whilst I'm talking to you, do the next bit and then we'll speed up. Now you'll notice this bit on here is really slippery, really loose, that's not a problem at the moment. So I'm going to do a bit more here, wrap it round. Try and keep it flattish, don't get loads of twists, but it's not the end of the world. It's, this body's gonna be quite big for this sheep. Uh, and then I'm going to do a bit on the end and another bit on the end here. And once you do those two bits, it stops slipping around and it's not a problem. So we're working on the bulk of the body first. just thought I'd show you this in slow motion, it'd be a, a bit easier for you. So I've done a little bit of a bulk, I haven't needle felted it loads, um, and I take a bit, put it over the end, just get that a bit, 
make it a little bit longer. So get it over one end, take it round the front and over the other side, hold it, needle felt it all in. We'll see you in a minute. As soon as you start to add the front bit and the back bit, everything stops spinning and becomes a lot more stable. So I'm going to work up through the middle using a slightly bigger double needle and um, meet you back in a minute. The other thing that I forgot to mention is that I don't always do a neck and a head because on makes like this they're quite easy to make them really really sturdy. Um, I'll make a small neck, needle felt it and then do the head on top. I find sometimes the um, metal from the head gets in the way too much of the head especially if it's all done at the beginning. I prefer to make the head separately and then add it on afterwards. If I am doing a horse though um, I have to do a, a bit of um, metal up through there and then just down, just one piece doubled over and then I build everything up on top of it. So um, his body is starting to look a lot better. I will spend a lot longer sort of firming him down. I will probably add on um, another layer all the way round. Now, as you're doing these bodies, sometimes you think, oh, the backs, that's the height. I wanted the back. I didn't want the back to go any higher. So what you do is you just get some wool and you just add it on underneath if you want him to have a bigger tummy underneath. You might think, oh, he's not, uh, round enough for a sheep so you might put two bits either side and get him a bit rounder because like my sheep have got they're quite uh, rotund quite roly-poly so um, I like to have good sides and a bit of a tummy underneath now this is not obviously my final layer so um, it doesn't have to look really neat you don't have to worry about the bits so I'm going to carry on doing that and then I'm going to show you a leg so there we go, I've built him up a bit more. Um, I will sp probably spend a little bit longer really firming him down, but I want to show you a leg before we go on. This sheep, by the way, is going to be a Valley black nose sheep. Um, they're really popular, they sell really quickly. I'm gonna try and get a picture to show you now of one. But this is what he's gonna end up like. So um, let's just have a look at the legs. Now I always sort of, as I'm going along, I always try the legs and one of them is really way too long. So you can either cut it off or you can bend it down. So I know right now that that is gonna be way too long. So I like to just bend it down on itself like that, nice and safe. And then that's a little bit better. They're a bit more even, they're not perfect, but we can work on them towards the end. So with a leg, what we're gonna do is get some wool. Ugh. Excuse me. Whilst I wrestle with the wool, it's a bit too much. Let's get a handful. This is just carded uh, Shetland. No, carded Leicester, I think it is. Um, no, it's quite a bit. Let's get a bit less. So it's quite a small handful I've got there. Carded wool is by far the easiest for me to work with personally. Now I will make it sort of a, a like a little tube, a little long bit, and I will attach it at. 45 degrees or attach it to the top. You don't have to get technical with me. <laughs> um, I just do it at an angle because it's easier to start. So let's just show you the angles just pointing downwards. And then this is where you just wrap it round. And a lot of people go, oh, you have to keep it flat. You do have to keep it quite flat and you do have to keep it quite close. The tighter you do it, the better it is. Now these legs are gonna be quite thick um, they're not fine legs, okay, so I'm not doing a really detailed leg like the horse has got sort of slightly finer legs. If I was doing really fine legs, I would do a really, really thin layer and you build it up with the legs. Oh, his legs are quite thin. So his legs were uh, done a lot thinner. He's got clay hooves as well. He's really sweet. 
um, but you keep wrapping it round. I'm using this other finger just to wrap it. And then you get down to the bottom, and I know I've got too much, I can feel that. Um, and so I just tear a bit off and just keep wrapping it. The thing about the carded wool is it's very forgiving with the joints. It looks so, it's easy to make the seam nice and smooth. And then this is where, because it's the upper leg, it's a bit tricky. So I'm holding onto it really tightly. Um, and I just, can you see that all right? Let's get the dark one. Um, and I'm still holding it, it's attached at the top, so that's fantastic, that's staying. And then you just needle felt it a few times, just to keep it in place and stop it from untwisting. Um, and then you can take your fingers off and start to work on it properly. So, see how I've released it? Oh, it's untwisting a bit, so I'm just gonna keep going a bit more. And the bottom, so I have covered the wire but the best thing to do to get the flat feet is to go upwards. Now this is where you can get your fingers so easily. So make sure they are well up out of the way. But once it's all secured, we'll do more. And I just feel, can you feel the wire? Is the wire coming through? No, nope, that's nice, good length. So this is at the point where when you've done all the legs, you can work out, is one of them too long? Uh, is, is the wire sticking out of one of them? Do you have to cut the wire off? And it's quite simple, you just get the wire out, you push the wool up a bit, cut the wire off, um, and then it will sort of fall back down over it. So that's if the leg's too long. And if the leg's too short, for the kind of makes I'm doing, you can just add a bit of extra wool on the bottom and do lots of um, needle felting upwards, and that'll give you a nice secure base. You're not gonna be that far out. So there we go. Um, and then I'll take that away because I know that's not unraveling. I need to neaten it all up. It's a little bit um, weak at the top there, so I'm gonna add a bit more at the top, probably that bit there. Just wrap it round, it's nice and easy now that there's wool on it. And you might even want to start going to a finer needle get a nice smooth leg in a bit but first off I use the coarse needle just to get it all secure and in place so I don't need that for now I can turn it round you have to get to the leg from every angle of it and this is where it's a bit difficult but what's quite good number one that's why you don't have sharp ends because you will stab yourself quite a bit but you can just go like that so it's really good so you get that leg out of the way um, you can move the wire quite a bit, repeatedly, but if you were to do that about 50 times, you might make the wire a bit weak. So it's okay to do it a couple of times, um, but if you were making something that you wanted posable uh, for somebody to repeatedly move all the time with the wire, just, you know, I don't think that's the best. I think you can pose it a couple of times and that works, but the more you bend the wire, the more it's gonna break. This I do off the side of the table, just to show you all the angles we're gonna to get to. And you have to get all the way around. Oh, sorry, it's a bit boring watching me do that. Um, and then that's quite good. I will do a lot more securing down in there because the base is just, top of the leg is just moving a little bit. So that is not, a bad leg already for um, a sheep and like I said this is quite a thick one so if you wanted to do something finer you start with a very thin layer there I've moved that one down um, and at this point it might be a bit unlevel because there's a tiny bit of extra wool so do all of them before you panic um, and level them up you can also twist through the body quite a lot uh, and you can adjust the level slightly at the top by moving this out a bit here or in a bit so that makes a big difference you're affecting the arch at the top through the middle so that you can wiggle it with that as well so you would carry on and do the other legs um, and then put the head and neck on if you want to see how I do the head and neck for any of my sheep I've got a tutorial on this one um, I show it all where I add the neck and then add the head on top 
um, and the same with this one. But something else that I do is the wire through the horns. It's really important. I find it's a lot easier to add the horns afterwards. If you do them as you're going through the make, they can kind of get in the way and it's also quite tricky. This, you can't even see what that is. This is a deer. So this is um, a statue I had on the side and I dropped it and the legs are broken so I'm going to make a needle felt out of it and I have literally, I'm halfway through it, I've kind of got a bit forward of it but I'll go back to it, I literally have copied the exact statue which is a really good way to try and work out how to do a make if you are not sure of the exact size so I worked out where the wire would be through the middle of the body and uh, through the legs and then I did do up through the head and I did do these because I'm going to attach horns on but they do kind of get in the way so a lot of the time because he's a big make I had to do it because I wanted it really strong but a lot of the time with the sheep that I do I do the horns after and I will take wire like that and I will take the femo clay and I will uh, put the clay on there so literally the clay's gone through that part of the horn and then I do a great big hole all the way down through and I put the um, horns on and they're really, really secure. So that's another thing to do with that. I've got a needle felting tutorial on him and I show you how I do the horns. I've done the same for this um, Highland cow with his horns, because they're female clay horns, which I think it's just a nice feature having the um, clay on there. And also I do clay hooves for the horses. Now this is where um, the wire has to stick out a little bit. I make the femo um, shape of the hooves. I I push it onto the clay, take it off, cook it, and then I glue them on the, each correct foot because they only fit on each one that you did the impression on, so that works really well. And the other thing I do is if you're um, struggling for like shapes of things, like I did with that statue, just take a soft toy and look at that and try and work out where would you have the wire if you needed wire for him to sit up and, you know, take inspiration from things around you, like my children's toys. Um, if you were trying to do an elephant, you'd get all the features and the framework. When I get on to ooh, doing something like this, um, I did do... Oh, you can't see him. I did do quite a bit more on the actual shape of the skeleton of the horse because um, if you look at pictures of the skeleton inside, then you need the legs to go down and along like that so it's a bit more specific horses are I do a couple of time lapses on them I'm still learning on them I want to get them a bit better but eventually I will do a horse tutorial but they're really quite involved so um, the sheep that we started with like I said is going to be a valet black nose sheep which they are very popular I'm going to do a full tutorial on that so do have a look at that and they do sell really well um, I'm also you know the reason why you would get to do wire armature in your animals is to make them more sturdy especially if you want to get a bit more serious about selling your items so I'm going to be doing a whole business series to help people on how to set up uh, their craft businesses so thank you for watching please do subscribe for more videos I'm trying to make there's just not enough time uh, there's so many videos in my head that I want to make um, and unfortunately I have a family <laughs> which I have to look after um, but uh, do subscribe because then you'll get to see all the videos and do like this video if you can and you're welcome to make comments I will try and answer them but thank you for watching and happy felting hello feltums feltums hi felters uh, behind the scenes thanks guys thanks for helping <laughs> it's a bit of a mess in here bye